Who were the wise men in history? The wise men are an ancient mystery hidden in plain sight. Some call them kings. Christian tradition has even made up names for them, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But the truth is much more exotic. It's not that the true identity of the wise men was lost. It didn't require an archaeological dig to find it. It's been sitting right there in books and libraries all these years, basically ignored. Why? Because the truth about the wise men makes many uncomfortable, and doesn't match at all the stories that have grown up over the years. First, let's get the idea that they were kings out of the way. The Bible never calls them kings. Yes, they advised kings. But they were not usually kings themselves. But some early Christians tried to connect them to prophecies about kings in the Old Testament, and the idea stuck. But what the Bible actually calls them is Magi or Magi as some people pronounce it. And this is where the discomfort begins. Because the Magi were actually priests, pagan priests of the Zoroastrian religion. Zoroastrians still exist today. During prayers and worship, they wear long white robes and hold a bundle of sticks in their hand or laid across metal stands. Many of their rituals involve fire. In their fire temples, a fire is kept burning continually. They also put the corpses of their dead in a tower of silence where their flesh is eaten by birds. However, they did have one thing going for them. They were one of the only groups in the world at the time to believe that there was only one God. So why are these pagan priests called wise men? Wise men is a generic term found in the Bible for the advisors of the kings of pagan nations. They helped the king make important decisions, though not in the way we would expect today. Rather they inquired of their gods by means of different religious rituals, anything from examining the internal organs of sacrificial animals to the flight of birds to signs in the night sky. There are several different kinds of wise men mentioned in the Bible. Enchanters, Chaldeans, diviners and magi are among them. So what are these pagan priests doing in the story of the birth of Jesus? And why were they in Israel, hundreds of miles from home, looking for a Jewish Messiah? For many years, they had heard about a coming Messiah from the large Jewish community in Persia, known at the time as Parthia. This community traced all the way back to the exile of the Jewish people to Babylon hundreds of years earlier. One of these exiles was the prophet Daniel. He was one of the wise men of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And when he correctly interpreted a disturbing dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, he was made the chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. In other words, he was put in charge over all the magi and the other wise men in the kingdom. This is when Daniel delivered one of the most important messianic prophecies in the Bible. The vision of one like a son of man coming with the clouds of the heavens. This made the Magi some of the first people in the world to hear Daniel's prophecies about the Messiah. And so, many years later, when they saw a peculiar sign in the stars of the night sky, they set out to find him. But why would they go to all the effort and expense to find this newborn king? Because it was their job to know what was going on in surrounding nations. This included participating in embassies that went out to meet foreign kings. So for example, they joined the Parthian embassy that went to visit the Roman general Sulla. Shortly before the time of Jesus, the Magi prophesied over Sulla. Later, they went with Tiridates, the king of Armenia, when he went to pay homage to the Roman emperor Nero. So when they saw a sign in the night sky that pointed to the birth of a new ruler in Judea, they went out to find him. Tradition tells us that the Magi arrived on three camels. But these were important dignitaries. You can be sure they didn't travel alone on their journey. With all that gold, they needed an armed escort. Besides, the Bible doesn't say how many of them there were. 
The number three comes from the number of gifts they brought, not the number of people that brought them. Christians in the area the Magi came from say there were 12 of them. The gifts brought by the Magi may have a deep symbolic meaning to Christians. But the Magi themselves would simply have thought of them as gifts fit for a king. Frankincense and myrrh, for example, were given as gifts to King Antiochus III by a wealthy tribe located along the Persian Gulf. Earlier, a large gift of frankincense and other perfumes had been given to Alexander the Great when he entered Babylon, an event at which Magi were present. And gold at the time was often reserved exclusively for kings, a symbol of royal power. Mary and Joseph needed those gifts to pay for their escape to Egypt, when Herod set out to kill their baby. But though they were poor, God had provided for them for this dangerous journey through these strange visitors from the east. The Zoroastrian Magi, 